Our scripture comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, beginning the sixth chapter at the first verse. Listen for God's word for you this morning. Now Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many heard him and were astonished. And they said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, son of Mary, brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not these his sisters here with us? And they took him, uh, and they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their own hometown and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could not do, and he could do no deeds of power there, except that he laid hands on a few sick, sick people and cured them. And he, and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went among the villages teaching, and he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and, ga- and gave them authority over unclean spirits, And he ordered them to take nothing for their journey, except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, and to wear uh, sandals, and and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. And if any place does not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, Shake off the dust that, the, that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent, and they cast out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. In our scripture this morning... Jesus is giving instruction to the 12 disciples as he sends them out. Um, It's interesting, he doesn't send them out alone. He sends them out in pairs together. Um, I think there's something important about uh, about understanding that, that, that we are to be in ministry with others. It's not a singular task. It's a, a partnership. It's a team. It's a ministry that we, we share together. And so he sends them out in two, and they go uh, having authority over unclean spirits to preach and to speak of repentance and to go to fight this battle uh, against evil and to call people to a place of repentance. And he sends them out. Um, He gives them, I think, one of the most important pieces of advice that we can learn in our own spiritual journey. And that is, he tells them to to carry very little with them, uh, to travel light. I remember uh, one of the things that Angie and I have always enjoyed doing is camping, and um, we started out the first summer after we were we were married we had a Volkswagen bus and um, I was working at the library at the seminary Angie had just finished her first year of teaching and uh, so I guess it was our second year after our second year of marriage and we took six weeks and we traveled cross-country in our Volkswagen bus and uh, you know we would camp out in tents we had very little that we carried with us on that trip. And, um, you know, we just, it was, it was you know, a, a very uh, fun trip. It, we, and we, if we needed something, we just stopped along the way to get it. Um, you know, over the years, we collected a few more things for our trips and our traveling and camping. And then the kids came along, and we wanted them to enjoy outdoors as well. And so we bought a pop-up camper, you know, and... Uh, and it was, you know, amazing. You'd, you'd set it up. It had a sink. It had water, you know. It had air conditioning. And, uh, and that was great, you know. It was, was, was lightweight. You put it behind the car. You take it wherever you go. And, you know, we'd, we'd go and camp. We did that for 15 years. We kind of grew up camping that way. And then now that the kids are gone, it, 
it kind of hurts my back to sleep on that thin foam mattress that was, you know. So needed something a little nicer, a little more permanent, and it even, ha- you know, even has a shower in it now, you know, the, what we have. And, and, and I, I realize how easy it is for us to, in our own comfort, in seeking our own self to, uh, to accumulate more as you go. And um, Jesus' advice is, is for us to travel light. And uh, he sends them out traveling light, not to carry so much stuff with them. And, uh, and if any of you you've, have moved after living in a house for a few years, and you make that move, you realize how much stuff you collect, how easy it is to collect. Or maybe you've gone through that difficult task of uh, parents who have passed on, and you go through their home after having collected for many decades items there and going through that difficult task of deciding what goes where, what goes in a garage sale or to be uh, gotten rid of and what is to be kept and who is to keep what. Um, so many things, so many things that we can, can carry with us. His advice to them is to not get too anxious about taking a lot of things along the journey. Um, maybe there's a, a bit of that. I don't know if you, I, I probably watch way too much television and see way too many commercials. Um, Angie is very aware of the difference between the commercials that I watch and the commercials on the television that she watches. Um, like, for instance, I, for me, as soon as I started thinking about this, I started thinking of that, uh, the beef jerky commercial, um, running with Sasquatch, you know, because it's the, either you run with Sasquatch or you're, you run from Sasquatch, right, you know, and, and the person who they image as being uh, chased by Sasquatch is the one who brings everything with them out there. And if you're running with Sasquatch, you're good. You don't have to carry a thing in the world. You know, maybe, maybe there's something, you know, advertisers are smart. Maybe they understand that there's a spiritual longing within us to be free of having to take so much stuff with us, about having to carry so much in our lives. There, there is a, a, a weight that we can carry in our lives. Um, and it's not just about what we have. It's not about materialism. Um, there's, there is the weight of sin that we carry. The, and we talked last week about the power of sin and the power of forgiveness to set us free. And, you know, we had our example up here, and Kyle was willing to be chained up here and, and to hold the, was held back, how we are held back by the power of sin. And then we are set free. And as our illustration, the video shared with us so, so clearly, uh, we are set free through the power of Christ, that we are forgiven. But it is so easy for us to choose to want to pick back up that which we have been set free from. That sin so easily can come back into our lives. And it's a, it's a daily struggle. It's something we work with on a, a regular basis to allow ourselves to be free. Uh, and not have to be at a place where we are constantly coming back to Jesus for forgiveness. Christ has forgiven. Now... We are to live as people who are free. And that has all kinds of opportunity and places of struggle that we can can wrestle with. We don't uh, choose so easily to want to to carry the weight upon us, but the weight can build just little by little. It's like the small backpack that you take on the first trip and then you realize you need this or you want that and you begin to fill it up and it weighs us down in the journey. Jesus came so that we might be free. So that we could stand tall without that weight upon our shoulders. Uh, the weight is heavy. 
the, the weight of sin, the power that it can hold of, on us, it distorts who we are, really. Um, we, we don't notice it so much at first, but just little by little, it weighs us down. And then, can't you feel the weight that we carry? And he wants us to be able to stand tall and free. I, uh, a few years ago, realized that sometimes in ministry, um, you carry a weight of feeling responsible for the church as a pastor. And, and you, it, it, you wouldn't want a pastor who didn't feel responsible. But ultimately, I'm not the one responsible for the church. God is, right? And I realized that I was putting a lot of that weight on my shoulders. And, um, and I wasn't standing as tall as I should. I, uh, then, as I just, it was really interesting, is whenever I, I came here to be pastor uh, at, at Epworth, um, I started doing a new practice that I saw a person talking about public speaking. They said, sometimes we don't realize how our posture reflects sometimes the way we're carrying weight in our life. And they said that, that whenever you, you speak, one of the things you should do is take a moment before to stand tall and to stretch yourself out. And that when you do, you open yourself up to a bigger presence than yourself. I call that God. The speaker just was talking in general. I think we call that the work of the Holy Spirit. That when we open ourselves up, not being closed off and shut off, but when we open ourselves up, we allow God's Spirit to flow within us and through us. And it becomes something larger than who we are. We stand taller than the weight that we carry. Um, it's interesting that we can be weighed down so easily by all the things of our life, many good, many bad, that we would load up and put upon ourselves. But Jesus wants us to live a life free of that. To live a life free of sin, of weight, so that we can stand tall, we can stand proud, and we can be free. It's not our job to carry the weight of the world. Christ carries that so that we can be free. Jesus said it in an interesting way. He said, um, take my burden, my Wait, because mine is light. If, you, if we would take his yoke, if we would take what he places upon us, it, it, it is light. It is one that is designed for us to be free. Uh, but instead, we often carry our own. We carry the weight that the world would place upon us, and we are to be free of all of that. It's interesting, too, that it's not just that he wants us to be empty. It's not that, that we are to, to get rid of the weight of sin and the weight of the world. But Jesus wants us to be filled with something. And that is what allows us to not reach back and to try to fill ourselves with the weight of sin. That is, Jesus wants us to know so fully his love in our heart that that is what fills us. His light, his love that we have in our heart and in our life becomes the dominant presence for who we are. And it fills us, and we have no desire to try to fill that empty space within because we're full of the light and the love of Christ. The weight of the past is gone, and we are set free to carry His burden, which is light and love. Sin no longer has to hold us back or to weigh us down. But we get to live in the larger image of who Jesus would call us to be. When we do so, then we allow our life to be full of what uh, Paul called the fruits of the Spirit. You remember those? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control that those are the things that we fill our life full, and there's no other room for anything else. 
There's a story about the disciples going out, and they cast out demons. And then the spirits came back because they had not been filled with anything in the, the presence. And, and they, they, as they came back, the, the, the person's state was worse than they were at the beginning. Because um, it's one thing to take sin away. We are granted forgiveness. Um, we are given the gift of freedom. God forgives us. But it's not that we just then empty ourselves, but we are to be filled with something new. And that is the power of God's love. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. Not just a turning from the dark, but a filling ourselves with the light. His glorious light that fills us and allows us to, to live and stand and run free. Um, if we were running with Jesus, that's what life would look like. It would, would be one that would allow us to, to not be bothered and concerned with whatever is going on in another person's life, but allow the light of our life to transform and to reach out to them. Allow us the freedom to go and to help others to stand taller. There's a, a beautiful African uh, parable that says that, uh, that no one person in the village stands taller than the one who's most bent over. And so it, there's a responsibility for each of us to help one another stand tall. And that is to help remove the weight and the burden that, he, that others are carrying. Do you know anybody that's burdened down in their life? Maybe because we've been set free and because we stand tall, we can go and help them shed that burden as well. Let them know that in Jesus there is someone who will take that burden away from them and let it be gone for good so that they can live light and travel light in the fullness of Jesus' love. Amen.